All right. Our next guest is Farah. I think her last name is Hawa. And she's a content creator. She's currently working as an AppSec engineer for Bar Crowd. Uh, awesome content creator. She just put out some videos about how to find great P1s on Buck Crowd based on her experience uh, with triage. So before I bring her on, I need you to chat. I need you to hype it up a little bit. Give me some emotes. Show her some love. I'm going to give her a call on Discord really quickly and bring her on. Let's give her a call. There we go. Hopefully things work. And hopefully things don't break. Again, we do this live every Sunday. If you're watching this from home, every Sunday I bring on a guest, someone that's in the industry. They either make content, they're a hacker, they're a big part of the um, community. I try to highlight them regardless of their background or where they're from. It's not about nationality. It's not about gender and race. It's about your contribution to the community. With that said, let's welcome our guest, Farah, and bring her on. Can you hear me okay? I don't think she can hear me. Hey, can you hear me okay? I can't hear you, unfortunately. I don't have your audio, Farah. Can you make sure on Discord uh, at the bottom, uh, click on your microphone, the arrow underneath it, make sure your headsets are selected properly. Um, Discord does that, unfortunately. It's a Discord. It's one of the biggest annoyance of Discord for me. All right, we'll give her a sec while she figures it out. Meanwhile, while she's doing this chat, let me know what you want to ask her. What are some questions you want to know specifically about bug bounty? Do you want me to talk about more of her experience with bug hunting, more about triage, more about content? Um, I think she's gonna, if this doesn't work out, we'll switch over to Google Voice. There we go. I can hear you. I heard something. And it's gone again. <laughs> this is the curse of doing things live. We'll give her a few sec. No worries. We have time. Uh, if it makes it easier, I can switch over to Google Hangouts. You want to do that? Give me a thumbs up if that works. Okay. All right, chat. We're going to switch to Google Hangouts. Let me hang this up. We're having some issues. Discord does this once in a while. It's a part of it. It's a curse of doing things on the go. So let me do that really quickly. Um, let me know again, what do you want me to focus on mostly? Do you want to hear her experience with bug hunting? Do you want to hear about some bug crowd stories? What do you want to hear? Bring on a nod. Um, I'm trying to bring people on. There is, I have some restrictions that I got to work with. It's not that I don't want to bring those people on. It's just, uh, more difficult to bring some folks on sometimes. Let's focus on this interview. Maybe after the interviews over we can all uh decide who will be the next guest all right let me invite her it's full screen cool book crowd stories okay we'll ask her some stories about book crowd all right you're on mute with no camera on yet okay there we go. There she is. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing great. Before we get started, for people that don't know you for some reason, give us an intro. Who are you? Uh, what do you do? And how long have you been doing it? Okay, so um, I'm Farah Hawa, and I work as an application security engineer at Buckroud. That's like my day job uh, where I triage bugs. Uh, apart from that, I also have a YouTube channel where I create content for, uh, it's mainly about web hacking and bug bounty. And uh, I also am a part-time bug bounty hunter. Very cool. Well, very nice to meet you. Unfortunately, I haven't had the pleasure to meet you yet, uh, especially with COVID-19 happening. There are no conferences. So people watching this, this is actually my first time. I've talked to you a few times on I think on Twitter and then on Discord a few times. Yeah. But I've never had the pleasure to meet you. So very nice to meet you. Um, thank you for taking the time to meet me and uh, being a part of the show. Yeah, really nice to meet you too. I actually haven't met 
anyone like I, i've had the pleasure to meet so many people this year on uh, twitter and just in general virtually but I'm, i haven't unfortunately been able to meet any of them in real life because of covid so that's sad yeah hopefully when uh, things go back to normal sometime soon hopefully it's not another year of this but yeah. uh, we all could get together and uh, hang out so tell me how did you get into hacking Um so I've been in uh, like infosec for 3 years now. Okay. So ab- about 3 years and I got I started uh, with doing some internships. Okay. Um but like the internships the I did two internships and the first internship that I did was like a bunch of stuff like so it was web app hacking and they also did like audits and they did seminars in colleges and stuff so they were doing a bunch of stuff. Um but then after that I kind of realized that I like web hacking like i like actual hacking so then i wanted to kind of pursue that more so i did another internship which was only about like web app hacking so i was uh, i mean on a weekly basis i would like uh, pen test or whatever hack uh, two web apps and then create make like reports and stuff like that yeah. that's when i really like started loving web hacking and stuff like that so that's how i actually got into it and i think I mean I am from a completely non technical background like education wise so like all my learning and everything has happened through that internship. Wow, very cool. Um how did you hear about bug bounties? Like what introduced you to bug bounties? How did you hear about, you know, bug bounties being a thing? And when was it? Um so the first internship I did like I I heard about the concept of bug bounties like once or twice but no one really did it around me so I wasn't encouraged to actually like go into it uh but then uh, the second internship that I did the CEO of that company I don't know if you know him he's Anand Prakash and he's done like some great like bug bounties in Facebook and um Twitter and Tinder and stuff so I mean that was a really kind of encouraging environment where I was uh i mean i i got to know about bug bounties and really got to see someone who had been so successful in it so i think that's when i actually got encouraged to go into it uh that internship was for 6 months and once that ended then i realized that i should like actually start bug bounties because i already had so much experience in web hacking uh, and i had become like fairly like you know comfortable with how web apps worked so i started bug bounties as like a side like it was a good gig economy like it seemed like a good gig yeah. economy thing to go into that so i got into it um who was this hacker that you mentioned what was the name anand prakash um, uh, the company's uh, name is app secure oh app secure yeah yeah i know and i remember them app secure used to be his handle is it still the same yeah i think so i'm not yeah, sure yeah, I but yeah I, i do think it handles Yeah. Yeah, so I didn't know um the intern from that's very cool. Um so you did your internship, yeah. you heard about bug bounties. Now, what did you why did you start doing content? What did you start making videos and why? Um so I think I always had a knack for like creating content and media. So uh for those who don't know, I actually graduated like 2 months ago and I have a bachelor's in mass media. So I wow. studied mass media for uh, like three years. Um, cool. So I always had a knack for yeah. I wanted to actually be a journalist, and that's why I got into it. But then infosec happened. So um, I just didn't. Uh, I couldn't find like a gap where I felt like this is where I should make content, and this is where it's going to help people. Uh, so, but I I was looking for a job like earlier this year in. Uh, I think Feb March I was trying to get a job and I was I had just entered bug bounties so I thought I'll start posting about my bounties on LinkedIn and I'll post my hall of fames just like everyone else uh, so you know I, in hopes that a recruiter might see it and uh, something like that but instead what happened is I just started getting like a bunch of messages from people like oh how did you find this what was your first bug and I'm like is there like really such a big gap like of like knowledge So then I thought maybe I'll just make like a small video and tell people how what are the resources that helped me and that's how I, my first video came about which is called my bug bounty journey which is basically just me telling people what resources um 
helped me and that video just kind of blew up yeah. more than i had expected it to and then i just thought yeah maybe i should just go with it and see where this youtube thing takes me yeah i think um bug bounties i don't want to talk about info in general but bug bounties have come to a point where like any other industry it needs that content it's education it needs the the people that represent that um the ecosystem or the community whatever you want to call it um it's cool to see you doing the content uh the first time i heard from your heard about you and your content was when you did an interview with uh the gentleman that's when i yeah saw you followed and i retweeted your video you was excited to see somebody else starting doing this and uh, kudos to you it's very cool uh i watch all your videos i watch your uh youtube not youtube your uh, instagram reels that you posted the other day uh, oh I'm yeah fan, yeah so. I'm a big fan. So good to see you for doing all this <laughs> stuff. Uh, I enjoy your content. So people watching this, make sure you go follow her. Make sure you support Farah. I think people in the chat are putting a link to her um, YouTube already. But if you don't know her, uh, I'll make sure to post a link to her YouTube channel, her Twitter and everything down in the description for people watching this um, when it's not live. Uh, let's talk about bug bounties a little bit more. Um, you said you made a video about your journey and some of the resources you used. For people that are watching this, you know, people are getting inspired by your story. You know, you uh, pretty much came out of nowhere. I'm not saying you did, you became successful overnight, but I'm saying you pretty much, yeah. a, in a short amount of time, you made a very good success. And, you know, that goes with your hard work. It's your, I'm sure you work a lot of hours. You have trained a lot of hours. You have put in all the hard work, but you also had your learning period where you learn stuff on your own. Um, what are some of the tips yeah. that you can give people that are new who want to do the similar things as you? They want a job in InfoSec. They want to become a bug hunter. They want to do pen testing and web. Um, what do you uh, recommend? So I'll talk about me personally, like what helped me. Uh, so I remember there was this period from Jan to about March, April, uh, where I was just learning. I, I was doing a little bit of bug bounty, but like I was mostly just learning. And I was uh, combining three to four resources daily, and I would work on those daily. And uh, those included, like first was coding. So I used to practice on Codecademy. Uh, it's great. I mean, I'm telling you, like when I come from a non-technical background, I literally know nothing. I mean, I, I know I did internships and those helped a lot. But uh, for me to like understand, I think a technical concept is, uh, I mean, I really have to start from scratch. Uh, so Codecademy is a great resource uh, for learning coding. I learned JavaScript, PHP, and Python uh, from there. And the new Boston's YouTube channel Oh my God, such a good resource. Uh, so just like keep the video playing and just like keep practicing uh, alongside it. Uh, just, uh, and I would suggest like when you're doing this, don't go for like, don't try to like complete the entire thing in one or two days. Give yourself time, do it a little bit every day because you, if you try to do it like all at once, you'll just get bored and leave it, which is what I think happens with most people. Um, another resource is uh, the Web Application Hackers Handbook and uh, the Port Figures WebSec Academy, which is just like a, I think a sequel to that or something like that. Yeah. It's like an updated version. So those, um, I think, are amazing. Uh, again, like they really break down every vulnerability. They tell you how to look for it step by step, and what are the Oh, like cues, I guess, to look for like what, how do you spot that something that could be vulnerable? Yeah. It's really very detailed. So again, that's also a really good book. And uh, labs, Port uh, Figures lab is good and Pentester lab. Like these are the two labs that I use the most. Uh, I think P Pentester lab, like you, I know it's paid, but you can get like a one month subscription. It's not that expensive. And a lot of people keep doing giveaways, including me. So you can uh, just, you know, try your luck over there as well. So uh, what I would say is like, do like one or two hours uh, every day, like do a little bit of coding, do a little bit of labs and a little bit of reading a book every day and just be consistent. Cause that's what I did like for three months. Uh, I mean, I know people think I'm like a overnight success, but for like a lot of months, like I was just not seeing any results. I was just doing this day, day after day. and. Uh, 
you just have to be consistent and like it will pay off one day yeah um you mentioned coding you said you um you did a little bit of coding and yeah. do you think coding is a requirement for people that want to do bug bounties i mean i would i i know people who don't know coding and are still doing amazing in bug bounties because i know bug bounties has like things like looking for info disclosures and github leaks and stuff which don't require coding so it's personal but for me it's helped me a lot especially i think javascript and uh, learning a server side language and learning how a sql database works and how our query like how do queries look at the back end i think everything really helps when i'm like I, I like to visualize like when I'm hacking I want to know how if I'm sending a request what is the back end seeing it like so if I change something what's happening yeah I like to know all these things because I feel like it guides me so personally it helped me but I wouldn't go as far as saying that it's a requirement because I don't think anything is a requirement as such I think it's helpful to understand what happens in the background yeah. right like why is this it's a sort of work um why is this um you know yeah. why why like are things happening you know something like that right. you have to know what is exactly happening even sql injection i think learning sql uh, like uh, just practicing on my sql just make a basic database and i haven't like developed any proper apps like full fledge no nothing i was just like probably made like really trivial labs and stuff like that but it was just to understand how the bugs that i look for actually work and why yeah. do they work I think understand the root cause. It's a uh, something that I've yeah. also did is um, when I did all of like my learning, I learned all these basics. The way the thing that helped me go to the next level was going on the defensive side of it, understanding how these developers fixing things, because sometimes they don't just fix it; they just bandit fix it, right? It's not a real legit fix. It's a bypassable fix. And a lot of yeah. times when you go and find a vulnerability, even with like SSRF, you know, just because you can't reach to a certain IP doesn't mean you can't bypass that restriction. And having that knowledge, it's not just by coding, it's just experience you gain because you have done some sort of development work, whether it's you write your own code or you deploy your own apps, labs or whatever. So definitely agree. Um, there's a question yeah. that came in the chat. Somebody wanted to know, why did you go from media to InfoSec and bug bounties? What made you um, do a change in career? if you're comfortable sharing it um i think uh, like the first thing was that it was i had a lot of time just a second i'm a little bit cold no sorry um so i think uh, i had a lot of time on my hands uh, okay. because uh, my college wasn't like the best college for media so it was very theoretical uh, when actually a media course is supposed to be like more hands on more practical but it wasn't so i had a lot of time on my hands and i felt like it wasn't as challenging enough as i had thought it to be or that like i i felt like i just had more potential than that and then uh, i wanted to start coding because like coding is just like the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of doing something more challenging and relevant but actually like my father suggested that uh, it's better that you go into like cyber security or something like that you know like yeah. go into like a more niche uh, kind of thing if you want to go in tech so um, we kind of like asked around people who are more familiar with the industry and then i i went into infosec uh so it was more of a change of career for a better it was advice that you got from your father it was a good change i assume right you and did you were you nervous when you made the change um no because i continued my mass media also uh, on the side I, I didn't give it up so i knew uh, i always had that and honestly i never thought like I, i didn't think of it as a career change at the time at the time i was just like i have some extra time and i'm doing something with it that's all i thought of it as i never uh, i never had any like major like ambitions or anything that i want to be uh, the best hacker ever mm -hmm. at the time uh, i just wanted to do something more challenging and this was perfect so yeah it's an inspiring story yeah it's it's one of the viewers wanted to know what made the change and it's cool to hear people's like different backgrounds right like 
some people don't even, you know, they come from a completely different background from teaching, for example, to bug bounties from yourself, mass media yeah. to bug hunting. So it's cool to hear what are some of the things that uh, push you to go and do these things. Um, let's take a break from the bug bounty and hacking things. I want to hear about your journey a little bit more. Did you have, you said you work with an odd, uh, app secure is the name you said. Did you, did, was he a mentor to you or did you have any mentors or anybody? And let me make it clear. I don't mean a mentor, someone who taught you day to day how to do things. That's one sort of a mentorship that, you know, they help you directly, but also indirect people, anybody that you looked up to, anybody that you read their blog post um, and inspired you and, you know, they helped you in some way because you read the things that they were doing. Um, was there anybody like that? Can you hear me now? Hello. Me there we go. I think you yeah. Job. What do you have yeah, any mentors indirectly or directly? You know, people that you read their stuff or indirect mentorship is people that you read a blog post, watch their videos, and so on. I think I've had both. Okay. Um, so when I was doing my internship at AppSecure, uh, my uh, direct manager, uh, he kind of guided me a lot. But again, it wasn't like teaching me on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, uh, like it was still like I was still I still had like a lot of autonomy when I was working but it was like if I um, if I felt like this there was a vulnerability somewhere or if I felt like something is behaving weird then I would like tell him about it and he would be like yeah yeah you're right and like you know he's like uh, look uh, like uh, search on google about this topic and then he wouldn't like teach me what the topic is he would just tell me to look for it and then yeah. after I like after I would read about it, he would be like, uh, okay, so like, you know, he would just ask me questions to make sure I had like understood it. So I think he, that was a really good kind of learning that I had, because uh, even if I would get stuck somewhere, he wouldn't give me the answer, which really helped me. It was kind of like, I call it like debugging my own brain. So I was just kind of like uh, messing up uh, and then learning and I had to like unlearn a lot of things. So it was like a whole process. I mean, I I still like till date think that the most learning that has happened like throughout my journey has been in that internship. So yeah, that was great. Um, and then again, like with content creators and stuff, I think I've spoken about this a lot, but Vicky Lee has like been one of my biggest inspirations as okay. a fellow content creator. Uh, because I remember like her blogs are just so easy to read and so easy to understand. Um, I remember I would just like read her blogs and I, I, I would read a lot of other uh, creators blogs and sometimes I would just be like, what are they talking about? I just cannot understand. But like her blogs were just so easy because again, like I think uh, if someone's from come from a non-technical background, they would really understand what I'm saying is that because um, I wasn't in an I wasn't in a college where people were just you know uh, like knew the jargon or knew this kind of like technical terminology. I came from a very different background yeah. uh, where people talk about movies and music and stuff. So yeah, it was a whole switch, and uh, like her blogs made it really easy to understand some of the most complex topics. So yeah. So it was. Um... Do you recommend people to find a mentor? Do you think, um, like, would you recommend people to go and look for, seek out a mentor, and if so, how? Would it be more of a go work at a company as an intern and, you know, rec you know ask someone to help you? Or do you want to, would you, would you rather say, hey, go and do things on your own and find people that could, you know, mentor you indirectly? Um. I don't know. I don't have a direct answer for this because it honestly yeah. depends on like your circumstances and what your environment is. Because uh, I did two internships, right? Like the first one, they just did a bunch of stuff and I was just so lost. Like I was, uh, and it, I didn't really have the direction and that focus, which usually a mentorship uh, provides. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it could go either way. Like in my case, like the first one wasn't really great. The second one was amazing. So um, if you get the right internship, then it's definitely uh, like it's it's a really good uh, opportunity to learn. Okay. But uh, even if you're looking out for a mentor outside of an uh, internship or outside of work, just make sure that they're not spoon feeding you 
like there's a mm-hmm. fine line between like mentorship and like just you know giving you like they shouldn't be able to they shouldn't be sending you like links to blogs and stuff like every single day like at some point you're going to have to go out and do all that self learning yourself so just make sure what, no matter like what if you get a mentor or outside of an internship or not just uh, they have to like just give you a direction more right. than uh, like just telling you directly what to do okay fair enough um how much time do you spend on hacking learning um cuz you, you you just said that you know from what i know you make content you are working yeah. for a platform um and you're doing bug hunting and you have your own personal life so how do you manage do you have a routine do you do you have a dedicated time where it's you know you time when you spend it on yourself how does that work i don't have a routine but i wish i did i think i would just be more regular and efficient if i did but um, i i think i have like my usual like 9 to 5 which i do from monday to friday and then um after that it kind of just depends on my mood like sometimes uh, i'll uh, like come up with ideas for videos or i'll like write a small like script or bullet points okay. um if i'm in the mood i'll do bug bounty for like a few hours but on an average uh, like in a week like if i'm talking about like actual hacking or actual bug bounty i think i spend around like 5 to 6 hours in a week hacking okay. uh, again it's like it depends on my mood i just go with the flow <laughs> which is kind of bad like i don't recommend it because uh, having a routine would just make me more organized um and i i don't like uh, think so much uh, but like if i do need a break i just go on like a binge uh, binging spree i'll watch like some cringy reality tv show which doesn't require my brain or just yeah. like listen to bollywood music for hours <laughs> so it's something like that like then it, then i'm just like uh, then i kind of make that switch when i'm like okay i'm kind of done with the baby stuff so yeah it's i don't have like a routine as such but i make sure i don't overdo it okay um somebody wants chat's been very persistent about this question um okay. tell us as much as you're comfortable with this um uh, how did you join buck crowd if everyone's been asking this question if you what ended up you with you landing a job at buck crowd um tell us the story um okay so i started making content uh then i had a few collabs with buck crowd which i'm sure most people know of the spotlight and the uh, what is that uh level up uh, thing that uh-huh. i did with them so i was working with buck crowd like on and off and um uh, i think they had like an opening for an asc in india so michael or like kudingo he started mm-hmm. to me and he said that we have an opening and uh like they had been seeing my content and they said that the like i have they said that i have a skill for like breaking down technical uh topics in a non technical manner which really helps in triaging and it does like sometimes you really yeah. have to explain to the client and also you really have to explain to the uh, researcher about bugs why they are like not applicable or why they're a critical bug yeah. so and and he reached out to me and he said that we think that you will be good for this so would you like to join us that's how i got into bug club that's the story yeah it's very so it was more of a you network yourself so you first of all you were making great content you network yourself you met people that were in the position to reach out to you and it opened up a door by you creating content and i think you're absolutely right having uh having the ability to break down technical topics for new people not technical people is very very helpful especially when you have to explain to someone that's a new hacker why a vulnerability isn't yeah. a vulnerability or why it's an idor not really an idor because you know it's public information you know having to explain yeah. that is a very difficult thing to do because i think as humans when we are especially with triage especially in the community is <clears throat> excuse me when somebody reports a bug you assume they understand security to the fullest extent when they might be new and not have the knowledge that you do and being able to educate them uh helps get uh helps the effort of not yeah. having that happen again on the platform um so shadow that was your question that came in 
I hope you got your answer, dude. Um, let's talk about certificates. Do you have any certifications? Um, do you plan on getting any? What's your take on them? So I do have a CEH, uh, which I got like, I mean, as soon as I uh, like started in InfoSec, I was told that CEH is the certificate that you have to get. And I got it. Uh, but like, I wouldn't recommend anyone to get CEH if they're looking to build up their skills. Uh, I'll, and I'll tell you why. So I get, got the CEH only for uh, like one was again, because I was coming from a non-technical background, it was to get through HR and to, to show like the HR that I have, like the necessary credentials or whatever. And uh, another reason is that like I made the shift right from mass media to InfoSec. So for me, uh, and uh, like keep in mind that these certificates are quite expensive. Like in India, uh, a CEH co could cost like, like two to three months of someone's entire sal monthly salary. So it's a commitment that you make. Like for me, in my head, when I got the CEH, more than like building up my technical skills, it was like a commitment that I'm making to InfoSec as a career. Oh, I think we may have lost her here for a sec. Give it a sec, Jack. I think we lost Farah here with some internet connection problems. Uh, let me switch over yeah. really quick. There we go. You're back. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Yeah. So, uh, what was I saying? So you got CH. It was it helped you understand the basics, and it's kind of expensive to get, um, especially when it comes down to yeah. the conversion rates. So CH is the only one you have, or do you have other ones? No, I only have CH okay. as of now. Um, I don't really plan to get any anytime soon. But uh, maybe an OSCP in the future. Let's see. Do you think, uh, do you recommend people to get CEH? Or do you recommend them getting any other certificates? Uh, I wouldn't recommend getting CEH if they want to build up their technical skills because I got it only for like getting through HR, yeah. showing them that I have the credentials and because I want it, like it's expensive. So I wanted to like, have it like you know i'm committing and it's a it's an investment that i'm making in infosec and like i'm committing to it as a career so it's kind of like a mindset thing for me but i wouldn't recommend it for technical because it's just too much theory for me like i was just like learning a lot and uh, i don't think it added a lot to my skill set but i would recommend oscp because i know a lot of people who've got it and um it's great to like actually uh like get get your basics down and know uh, like go down to hacking it's not uh, it doesn't cover a lot of web hacking mm -hmm. which is why i'm a little like uh, hesitant to get it but i know it's a great uh, overall hacking uh, like if you want to get an idea of overall hacking then i think it's a good certificate to get i think ch um, as far as i'm not a I'm a little bit jaded and not a big fan of CEH, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But I, I agree, though. It's what gets you past HR. And especially in the U.S., I think, for most government jobs or... Um, yeah, for most government jobs, you actually do need to have your CEH. Uh, but I think most of those certificates are... There's two things. Either getting past HR or learning the fundamentals um, because, you, you know, you, you don't have the time to do it on your own. You need guidance or whatever it is. Um, I don't have any certificates. Mm -hmm. I'm very open about this. Um, but I think you're absolutely right. It really is helpful to learn the fundamentals and um, get past HR. Uh, let's talk about bug bounties a little bit more. How has... Oh, wait, hold on. Did I lose you again? Okay, you're back. Um, no, I can... How has triage helped you with your career so far? Have you learned anything from it? Has it, is it, is, it doesn't have to even to be bug bounty related. It doesn't have to be technical. I want to know, like, what skills have you learned, both technical and non-technical, um, by working for a platform, a big platform like Buckcrowd, and especially being on the triage team when you're on the front line of uh, talking to researchers, talking to customers. Tell me, how does that, uh, how does that help you improve? Um... I think it's uh, made me a lot more confident in like my uh, like talking to people about technical skills directly. Like up till now, I only had the YouTube channel where I was kind of talking to like a mass audience and no one's really in front of you. But I think with triage, it's like um, 
like you know every single thing that you say is important and that way like initially i used to be like really scared and i used to like like think so much and uh, but i think the one thing that i've learned uh, like through this whole like i've been working since the past 2 3 months so since then is a lot more confidence in just like uh, being able to communicate uh, technical concepts to the client as well as to the researcher um i think also like working by yourself kind of like because uh, sometimes like one submission is only handled by you and like you know you're like the one responsible for it it's like yeah. if the uh, researcher loses it's bound to you like i i'm not saying it's on the triage but i know like there is a part that they have to play so it's a huge responsibility as well that they have so in that sense it's taught me a lot of autonomy and independence as well because uh, i think like triaging is fairly like something it's it doesn't require as much teamwork i would say as other uh, roles yeah. so that as well and technically uh, technically it's taught me like a lot of course i can't like use everything that i learned but it's still amazing it's just good to like see really uh, good bugs come in um it's really g- good to see like the like some hackers have such like unique bugs and um like sometimes it's something that you would think that is so obvious but like it's not like you know it just uh, when when they when they write about it it's like oh, Oh my god this is so obvious like how did i not think about it or how did how has anyone not thought about it yet but i think it's like a good mindset thing also it's like you know you're picking the brains of hackers like that so it's really cool and so you get to see like the whole picture right you get to see why some things happen the way they do because you know the customer knows more whatever that is and you also get to see the gaps in between all of it um i did a little bit of triage at both uh, bug crowd and hacker one years ago and i think it's yeah. uh, it shows you a different side of bug bounties and the, the biggest thing for me was i got for a lot sure. of i got a lot of uh, empathy for people that are either doing triage or work on a security team that deals with bug bounties because some bug hunters aren't the nicest in some of the comments um, yeah. and it could also be you know a language barrier thing but you get the empathy of understanding how much work goes into triaging a single bug or even running a bug bounty program let alone working out on these platforms and I kind of want to highlight that with uh with you on the show. Um yeah. I the, agree with you. Why do you hack? Like what's the motivation? I think it's just like nice to like I I honestly I don't hunt for like the reward. I really don't care. I I hunt for I I think I like to hunt more for swag than I like to hunt for money because it's just cool to have like uh you know a big company uh, swag like a like a bottle from a big company or like a t-shirt it's like good to like be able to say like oh i hacked like the uh, recently i hacked like the, disney. Uh, disney plus hotstar yeah in uh, like that's like a, a really popular streaming service in india disney plus hotstar so i was like oh i hacked disney plus hotstar they don't offer bounties they just gave me like some swag but it was just cool like i just feel so nice to have those things and like it's good to have that on my uh, like bounty portfolio so that i think that really motivates me what did disney send you again i saw a photo you posted on instagram or on twitter what was it the t-shirt and yeah. what else they sent me a t-shirt and this bottle is right here send me like this zipper oh, that's cool. and okay. like a mug they sent a mug which also says like hot star so it's really that's cool awesome. like every time i have my morning coffee i'm like I did this. I want this. This feels really cool. It's a feeling of accomplishment. It's something that you have done yeah. for a big brand like this. It's a big brand in the yeah. world. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Um so to on the topic of hacking and bug bounties. How do you let's talk about recon first of all. What is recon to you? What does it mean? Um so I mean it's the basics like subdomain scanning. I use like Uh, a mask or something. I'll use Dir Search for directory scanning and a way back URL. Just like one of my favorite things. But that's kind of like the basic thing for me. I don't really depend on that a lot. Uh, one thing I do a lot is um, whenever I start on a target, I go through like every single functionality, like every small little functionality, 
and i'll make notes and i'll make notes like an obsessive person like i will write down i use notion and i'll like make all these sections and i'll write down like every single functionality like no matter how insignificant it seems okay and it's kind of like creating a documentation of my own of that application of what i understand of it and like i'm i'm not kidding you like sometimes i've just found bugs like logical bugs by just reading through like my own documentation and i'll find like a few loopholes and uh, it also helps like when you've already found a bug and then you want to chain it with something and then you just have like this whole thing in front of you so that's like w- that's what recon is to me like m- that little note of mine so what is um so your 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 version of recon is to understand functionality more than like supplement enumeration and stuff like that yeah i would say so okay um what about a large target um how do you approach a company let's say you're on buck crowd so let's say what about tesla if you want to approach a company that that big like tesla um what would your approach be like um i would do like the basic stuff i would look for subdomains and then um do my directory scan and then kind of just go like very recursive on it okay. uh, with like the way back to our uh, results and uh the directory scanning like i'll just take one result into another tool and <laughs> go recursive with it that's like my thing i have also really been into uh, google docking these days uh so it's like i have come up with this like new mindset or something it's like you know when you think about a company they're not just, just they don't have only the security department they, they they're not just made up of code right like they have a sales department they have a marketing department and they do store that data somewhere so i mean if you could get your hands on that kind of data and then you know you use all these google docs which could uh, uh like you know reference the data which is stored on all these third parties which have like sales data or like marketing data yeah. or like any kind of data i think that's something really interesting that i've found lately and i'm i'm really like going into that zone of google docings that's also like a big part of my recon now okay uh and you said you use so i want to highlight some of the tools you use <laughs> i know someone in chat said fuff over directory search i'm with you i like to hire search sometimes more than fuff uh, but i use both and you said you use wayback urls um yeah. i assume you use burp street we'll talk about burp in a sec um what else do you use or any other recon tools that you recommend or that you use i think i'm very basic that way like i just used um uh, sir.sh is good um for subdomains amass is good for subdomains directory search for directory a uh, link finder also i use for okay. javascript files that's something really good as well um i love that you said i love that you said i love that you said amass and not amass plus one you get brownie points for that cuz a lot of people say um, amass so. <laughs> I've, i've learned that from your live recon streams <laughs> let me tell you i make a point when people say amass i don't correct people but i come back and i try to say amass in a sentence so i can say the tie say amass um so i'm going to use amass you use link finder um yeah. you mentioned javascript a few times you said you learned javascript you also said yes. you use link finder for javascript files tell me why is javascript important to bug hunters and why should they learn it so many reasons i think javascript is uh something constant in every web application like why would you not want to know it um the first thing is you can look for like secrets and stuff hidden in the codes so like keys api keys tokens um and it's really common okay also um it really helps with uh, like for me what i used to do was initially i used to just like blindly paste all these xss payloads without knowing what's going on or what's happening and that's really bad do not do that so javascript uh, like learning javascript really helped me understand how to like if i'm even if i'm pasting a payload and if it's not working how can i modify it how can i make it work why is it not working there why is it working somewhere else so it really helps with knowing javascript uh, i mean it really helps uh, with xss and uh, i mean i 
I know uh, from being on triage, like I know a lot of companies are like not accepting uh, uh, XSS unless they show some impact. So I think Java, knowing JavaScript helps you to show impact as well, like with an XSS. So it's really important for bug hunting. Yeah, I think um, you said it really the best way is for XSS, for example. I know uh, Codingo is a big advocate for this. There's a difference between alert one and an account takeover with an XSS, a vulnerable account XSS, yeah. for example. Um, and also like understanding how the application works under the hood versus relying on the UI and finding functionality, right? Like if you know JavaScript, you can chase an endpoint, see what parameters it takes, what kind of data it takes, how does it work? and uh, look for vulnerabilities in there. Um, looking at my notes, let's talk about Burp Suite. Um, do you use Burp Suite regularly? Yeah, I use it every day. I, I don't um, know how I forgot to mention it as the main tool. It's like the most used tool. Do you have a, a list of extensions that you think bug bounty hunters should uh, definitely have in their tool belt. Is there any particular one that you recommend? I don't use too many, uh, okay. especially not on a daily basis, but there are, a, I mean, there, there are so many good ones. Um, I think Turbo Intruder is definitely a great one uh, for uh, race conditions and HTTP request smuggler is good too. Okay. Uh, also, uh, I think then I use a lot of like context based uh, extensions for example if i am testing a graphql application then i will use the inql uh, scanner and okay. if i have um the if i have if i have like jwts then i'll use json web token so i think there are a lot of like context based extensions that way uh, you don't have to use them on a daily basis but when you're testing an application that has those things it's really useful to have those extensions okay uh, yeah, I think I use Burb Suite for, I don't know why I pay for the license. I use it for repeater and I use it for proxy and sometimes I use intruder. Um, but I think the, the extensions come into play for me more for productivity yeah. and efficiency, kind of what you were mentioning also. That yeah, makes yeah. things nicer, helps you do some of the stuff that you don't want to do manually. Uh, in that sense, I think, like, I don't think there's anything wrong with not using any extensions. It's it's not a requirement yeah. to use every extension on Burp Suite. It's mostly to, um, it's however it works for you. It's whatever fits best for you. You should be using it that way. Um, so if you're watching this, uh, you don't, you can't afford yeah. Burp Suite. It's not a requirement to use Burp. You uh, at least pay for it. Um, get the community yeah. version, learn how to use it, get a bounty and then go buy uh, Burp Suite. Um, let's talk about also, like uh, apart from I'm sorry apart no, no. from the like the uh, B A B app store or whatever yeah, there's also like just I think uh, there are two functionalities that are quite underrated like one is the scope mm -hmm. I think it can be optimized really well like uh, people don't talk about how well it can be optimized so the scope uh, tab and even the HTTP history tab those are some tabs that you should be like optimizing like you know. Uh, make your scope really specific and uh, uh, just uh, like click on whatever extensions. Like if you want to find JS files, Burp is, you don't need Link Finder. Burp is great for finding JS files. You don't need an extension. Just use HTTP his, uh, history and proxy, uh, sorry, not proxy, the scope tab in the best way. Uh, so okay. Those are like extensions as such. Yeah, I agree. Um, the Burp proxy history is good for testing a particular yeah. functionality that's multi-step, right? You can see the whole thing. You can delete everything. You run your request. It lists everything that happened in the background. You can analyze it. Um, and I don't think yeah. a lot of bug hunters actually do that that often. Um, let's talk about targets. How do you pick your targets? Um, what makes a target uh, a company that you want to hack on? Um, so firstly, like rewards is like not a problem for me. Like I don't think about it much when I'm bug hunting. Um, but what I do look for is like the focus areas of, uh, a target. So, uh, I think I mentioned before, like, I like to look for like logic and access control bugs and stuff like that. I really like to look for those. So if a company has, uh, applications, which, are, which has, uh, like a lot of roles, then I will go for that application. Um, 
also like i get really overwhelmed by like huge scopes i would never go for a program like verizon maybe or tesla because i just get too overwhelmed but like if they have like two targets with an open scope then i think i would like uh i would go for it and yeah it's okay. that's how kind of I, i pick my targets so you like the big application small scope So like a single app but that application is huge it has a lot of functionality versus a company that Yeah. Okay, how does uh the brand play a role? Like you said you like Disney because uh Disney is a big, you know, the hot star. Yeah, hot star was a big thing yeah. for you guys. So does that play a role in Because you said you, you said you don't do it for the bounty. The bounty is nice, the swag is what you want. Yeah. Do you pick those swag companies based on the branding because you use it because it's a big name? Uh I mean swag is not a huge factor by itself but yeah the company itself it does play a big like uh, if especially like if it's something that I use uh like I remember I had been using Canva for a while like I use it for making all my YouTube thumbnails I use yeah. it for making like my outros and stuff so I'm very familiar with it I I've used it a, like a lot even in my mass media course i was very familiar with canva so when okay. it launched its bug bounty program i was like i'm going to have on that because i'm already so familiar with it so that i think plays a huge role for me like if i know uh, what an application is and if it this i don't know if people if this is weird to say but like if it's an application that uh, does something that interests me like for example canva it's all about creativity and uh, creation So I really enjoy that. So I would like like to hunt on it. I would like to test out the functionalities because I think I would have the perspective of like a normal user. So I think that really helps. And that way, it, it's kind of like a mix of looking at how big of a brand it is and how much I like uh, the work that they do and like how much I I can like relate to it. Okay. Uh, people, are, so this is a question that's coming in the chat a lot. I'm gonna reword it. They want to ask your most interesting bug you have found, but I know because of disclosure that wouldn't be the easiest thing to do. What is um, what's a vulnerability that you have found that you were super proud of? Um, a short story. You don't have to disclose what company it was. Too much details. I don't want to get you in trouble, but something that you were really, really proud of for finding. Um, I think there have been two. uh so one was the one, one i found when i was pen testing uh and the reason I, it's not like a crazy bug or something the reason i was proud of it was because i had never seen that technique being uh, like recorded publicly and it's kind of stupid and it might be recorded publicly i don't know but i hadn't seen it so uh it was this bug where i could bypass the uh two factor authentication like it was uh after uh, logging in it would like assign a cookie and then that cookie would just work for like resetting your password and stuff like that and i would, i found it really cool so at that time i think i was really proud of that okay. i think it's publicly recorded now so yeah but uh, and yeah and the recent hotstar one that i found uh the uh like the technique that i was talking about earlier like you know a company is made up of more than uh, just their code and it's it has a lot more like so i found like some data about their in you know, like workings which were wasn't like no secrets and passwords and stuff but yeah it was something that they wouldn't have wanted to be public so, so i think that was really cool i found that through google docking and i also like uh, if you go under my tweet i've linked like a blog and i've linked uh, a couple of docs that were helpful so i think that was also a bug that i was really proud of very cool um who asked us i think b b phobe you answered that question that was a question that came in um let me see i have to look at my notes we were having a good conversation so i'm kind of like sidetracked by my notes um <laughs> i think i've asked you almost everything about bug hunting that i wanted to know Let's talk about the two favorite things that I like to ask all of my guests. And I think you know where I'm going with this. Uh let's start with burnouts. Yeah. Do you deal with burnouts a lot? Uh I I wouldn't say I deal with burnouts. Um I haven't like had any phase where I'm like I don't want to work for like weeks so much that never happened to me okay. but i do because i think i sense it coming like i get really demotivated and i don't mm -hmm. feel like doing anything and that's when i said like i go on those like binges and i just listen to music for hours and stuff 
and kind of do like activities that like that are just like brain rest um and also like the, like there's something that i tell myself every day like i don't have to do like i don't have to accomplish like a lot of things in one day i don't have to move mountains uh, in one day i just have to do like a little bit every day so even if i'm doing like 1% of something that is ultimately my goal uh, I I I kind of like I, I'm easy on myself that way. I yeah. don't like give myself a hard time. So uh, that really helps. Like that helps me be consistent and also helps with the avoiding burnouts. Okay. Um, so you've gotten a good hold of how you deal with burnout. So you 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 notice it. Yeah. You take care of yourself, and you come back with a fresh mind or whatever that is. Yeah. So um, far, that's true. Yes. Okay. Um, what about imposter syndrome? Um, so for people that are watching this, you're not familiar with imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is what, just what it sounds like. Do you feel like you're an imposter because you either are working with a group of talented people that know more than you or unfortunately you're comparing your success to other people or whatever the source of it. So you think you don't know enough, which may not be the case. Do you deal with imposter syndrome at all? If yes, how do you deal with it? How do you cope with it? If not, why not? I deal with it so much, almost on a daily basis. Um, but I feel like uh, it's uh, for me. It's just like uh, more of a self-doubt kind of thing. Like I'm always like, oh my god, there are like all these. I I think it's uh, partly because as a content creator, that I, like I have so many subscribers. Like why do I have so many followers? I I just I can't comprehend it sometimes. Like why are they following me? uh like i don't know so that's kind of like the self doubt thing that comes in the way um but i deal with it i just think of how far i have come yeah. and uh, it, i think a huge part of it uh, is I, I have this thing where i need to like stop relying on external like factors telling me uh, like you know defining my worth so i think like it has to be more internal so for me i think about it like i think of myself like 3 years ago and what was i doing i mean even at the beginning of the year if someone would have told me in jan that you are, you would be working as an asc you would be getting interviewed by nams like i would have been like just you know i don't believe you so i kind of think of my journey i think of how far i have come and i'm like no i have worked for it and i do deserve it so that's how i deal with it but it's hard i mean in process in some i deal with it almost on a daily basis so let me say this um first of all you've done an amazing job so far with everything you have done don't ever thank you um don't ever override or like underestimate the things you have done um the videos that you put out are great you're helping a large number of people that would probably not have access to these resources if it wasn't for your videos um, so always remind yourself of that. Uh, and I think your approach of you know looking back and reflecting, compare yourself, the comparison is great, but when you compare yourself to yourself from a year ago. So yeah. just like you said, if you didn't think all these things would happen, by the end of the day, remind yourself, you've worked hard for these. You are the sole reason why you have gone to where you are today. And I think you're doing an absolutely amazing job. I wouldn't ask why people are following you because you're putting great content right? people <laughs> want to hear from people that are you know putting out good content but it is crazy Thank to you. it is crazy to sit down and say this many people care enough to watch my stuff like even for me i go but yeah. my numbers are in the highest like i don't have a huge youtube following but right now there's 206 people watching this interview and the way i look at it is mm. i don't look at it as a number of people watching i go if i was in a room i've done conferences but i have 20 people watching me speak 30 people watching me this right now close your eyes and imagine 200 people in a room watching this interview that's live, a lot right? of people. <laughs> so that's the way i look at it and i go there's 200 people there's 200 people that i'm reaching and even with you when you go i have this many people following me that's that's this many people that you have somehow impacted in a lot of times in a good way a lot of times yeah. you've inspired them and based on the chat i see a lot of people that are inspired by your story um and the things that you have done so kudos to you that's very very cool uh i haven't really gotten to know you but as a content creator who's also infosec i appreciate everything you have done so far Thank if, you. If you and are, thank you to everyone who's watching. <laughs> yeah, if we're not done yet, if you've watched my interviews, you know that I like to 
end the interview with uh, some fun. Yeah. Before we switch over, I try to ask this question. I call this the Ash Fox question, even though he doesn't come watch us anymore as much as he used to. I like to ask this question that Ash always uh, would put into the chat. Where do you think the bug bounty industry will be headed in the next three to five years? Okay. Um, I think it's, uh, I think we're moving towards this very, uh, I don't want to say pen test, but it's just definitely going towards a more uh, sort of personalized and customized bug bounty experience, like mm -hmm. even for the client and for the researcher, like I think uh, like uh, I see it, like I know Buck Cloud is doing all this, um, like these NGPPs and CPPs where they invite like uh, researchers who they know are good at finding these kind of bugs and they have like, you can upload your resume, you can put your preferences in. So it's definitely moving towards a more like customized, personalized thing, which I think is beneficial for both. Like researchers will stop getting invites to uh, programs that they're clearly not, you know, equipped to uh, test. And uh, like as a result of that, programs will also start benefiting more. So I think I think it's moving in that direction of like uh, borderline like pen testing and bug bounty. Like it's it's. I think the lines are gonna get a little bit blurred. Yeah, I think this uh, the whole crowdsource model is really fun to watch, yeah. and it's becoming a more personal right crowdsource both for hackers and researchers. Uh, that's a good way to put it. Um, someone in the chat, I love this question that just came in the chat. Um, who was this? A uh, life hacker wants to know where do you see where do you see yourself in five years? Honestly, I don't know, <laughs> but yeah. I think just creating more content. Like, I I have whenever I create content, I have to be. I, it has to be something that I would have watched while I learned and what. And that's actually the approach I take whenever I finish learning a new concept. That's when I make a video about it because I know I still have that uh, approach to it where I'm just learning it. So that's something I want to keep going in my channel. Like I want to keep learning, like my learning curve should be there and my, um, like the video should be there. So it, it sort of has to be like a go-to uh, resource for web hacking. Like that's what I want my channel to be in, in three to five years. Um, myself, I'm not really sure, honestly. I don't know. Okay, fair enough. I think at least you have some sort of a understanding of what you want to do with your content. I think, I'm not going to ask your age, but you seem to be young enough to have plenty of time to figure out what you want to do in five years. Um, yeah. So I don't think you need to have a plan, but it's good to at least you, you have some sort of an idea what you want to do with your content. All right, last question. I promise we're going to go to the fun part of it. I want to know, give me your advice for people that are watching this, um, new people that, are, again, are inspired. Give them your advice if they want to get started in bug bounties. It doesn't have to be resources, but like a whole, give me like a, what's it, 240 characters per tweet, longest, like three tweets you can okay. give me. Um, give me advice. I'm new. What do you recommend? Uh. So I'm assuming that we're talking about web hacking here. So learn how the web works, le like learn how to read HTTP, figure out what headers are, how cookies work, um, learn about browser security. After you're done with that, then move into the security part of it. Read a lot of write-ups, read a lot of write-ups every day, uh, practice on labs and uh, don't obsess over like just keep like practicing just start hacking and when you start i would advise you to start with programs that offer like hall of fames and uh, like swag because those are generally easier to hunt on but they will also like build up your confidence a lot and um, there are a lot of programs that you can find uh, through uh, like docs and stuff so you don't even have to be on a huge platform if you feel like it's too competitive for you because that's what i did i started uh, like i used to look for programs through google docs and I used to like hack on them initially to build up my confidence to so start with those. Once you feel like you're confident enough, you've done like five, six of them, then go to a big platform like HackerOne, Buck Cloud Integrity, and then start hacking on like those programs. That's very, my advice. Very well said. I agree. Um, I have nothing to add. That's a really good way to put it. Learning the basics, practicing, and then jumping in and not being obsessive about it. Yeah. All right. Let's wrap this up. I know it's, 
a little late in your time. I, I really appreciate you staying up late for this interview. Um, if you're not familiar, I'm going to ask you some bug bounty questions, you know, just to understand your um, your journey that you've also made a video about. But then we move away and I ask you, I give you a word and you just tell me the first thought. It could be a sentence, a word that pops into your head. Um, okay. And we'll take it from there. All right, tell me, what if you had to hack on a bug bounty program for the rest of your life, what program would it be? Canva. Okay. Um, what is your, what was your first bounty? What was your, sorry, what was your first bug you found, not your first bounty, your first one? It was a, uh, it was a site-wide CSRF in a very fresh bug bounty program. Do you remember your first bounty? Yes, one hundred dollars. Do you remember what you did with it? I don't think I did anything with it. <laughs> Are there any accomplishments that you're proud of that were only um, accomplished because of bug bounties? Whether it was a purchase, whether it was a life goal, a life achievement, anything big? Um, I can't think of anything as such, but I guess, uh like the whole like youtube and everything started with the uh, bug bounty so i guess like, like working for buck crowd is a pretty great achievement for me absolutely uh, i think getting a job because you did something in the community is a great ac accomplishment of itself yeah um what is your favorite bug type information disclosures and access controls i have two okay um are there any hackers you collaborate with that you want to give a shout out to I haven't collaborated as much as I would like to, but I would love to collab more in the future. Are there any hackers you want to collaborate with that you want to drop their names? Um, sure. I mean, uh, I don't know if they would like to be like called out in public, but like um, Sajib, SML555, and uh, uh, there's HX01. Okay. I would like to collab with both of them. Awesome. If you're watching this, you have someone who wants to collaborate with you, hit her up. Um, what is your favorite tool? Um, Burp Suit and Google. Uh, Google is not a tool, sorry. But like Google <laughs> Docking. Okay. Um, what are some of your hobbies outside of hacking and content creating? What are some of your hobbies? Um, swimming. Okay. Um working out and uh i think that's pretty much it uh somebody in the chat asked do you play any video games no okay i'm not a gaming person no worries at all um it's good that you're not because <laughs> let me tell you it takes up a lot of your time especially if you get <laughs> addicted to call of duty wars and like i am uh, i'm gonna give you a word now uh the first one that comes into your okay. head just tell me um i'll make it easy with the first one but crowd Triaging. YouTube. Um, create, view, uh, creating. Okay. Uh, bug bounties. Swag. Um, op secure or not who you did your internship with. Um, best, like best learning experience ever. Okay, uh, CEH? Not recommended. <laughs> Disney. <laughs> Sorry? Disney. Um, Disney Hotstar. Um, Canva. Thumbnails. Um, Recon. Um... I'm thinking, but I don't know how to like word it. Uh, like searching for information about like, like searching for confidential information. Okay. Uh, a mass. A mass. <laughs> I like that answer. <laughs> um, burp suite. FOMO. 
I get a lot of FOMO when I look at the number of extensions that I'm not using. <laughs> That's cool. Okay. Um, information disclosure. Google Docking. And last but not least, JavaScript. XSS. Thank you so much. Well, hey, I want to say thank you so much. I think someone in the chat said it's probably like 2 o'clock your time right now. Is that true? Yeah, it's 2.39 a.m. Holy crap. I didn't think it was that late. But I want to say thank you so much for staying up this late to do this. Um, I appreciate you so much for being here. Um, it was very cool to have you as a guest. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of your work and see where you're going to be in the next five years. Thank you. Thank you for having me and inviting me. It was such an honor to be on the show, which I've seen since, I mean, I started. I saw all these amazing people and now I'm one of them. It's amazing. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, Aaron, I hope you have a good night and I hope you get some sleep. And thanks again for being yeah. here. I appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah. Good Talk night. To, Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. All right, that was a fun interview. Um, I didn't realize, who was it in the chat that said it's two two forty? Holy shit, all right. Well, I'm glad that uh, we got to have Farah as a guest. I've always been uh, very curious to hear her story and understanding uh, how she has gotten to where she has today. And um, very impressive story, very inspirational. I hope you guys got some good value out of this can i interview jen sick next sunday not yet i've reached out to him um he's one of the people that i want to bring on the show eventually um but maybe we'll bring him on later i want to address something with everyone watching the stream today i'm a little disappointed in the chat um i don't like the way some of you some of the people that got banned you're not coming back ever again uh if you're banned tonight you're never coming back on the stream as a contributor in the chat you can watch it but you're never coming back it was some of the comments you guys were making was ridiculous um i don't understand what the fuck the point was um so with that said if you got banned today there's no fucking way you're coming back that was not called for um ipsic it was does not do interviews sorry i'm switching the contents but i've reached out to ipsic he doesn't do any interviews unfortunately but if you want to hear somebody i want to before i get off today i want to hear who do you want me to bring i know you guys said gensec um someone said ipsec who else do you guys have anybody else you want me to bring on anon is one of them okay um let me see i can make a note of this let's go on here okay i'm gonna reach out to him and see what he says Thank you for the sub. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I would love to have him on here. Um, but I can't message him somehow. Why can't I DM him? What the frick? All right. Can you guys do me a favor? Um, can we... Can you guys just tag him in a tweet and tell him to come on the show? Because I can't message him. I would love to. I would love to uh, have him on here. Just uh, drop him a tweet that says, "Hey, uh, you should go on the Home Six Recon Sunday," uh, and he can reach out to me. Because I can't reach out to him at all. It's not close. I, I follow him. He follows me back, but um, it doesn't show the DM button. Let me see. Let me show you guys what I mean. Am I bad at technology? Is that what's happening here? Hold on. Um, where is OBS? Oh, OBS is in front of me. Duh. I can't. Like, there's no message button. If you go here, there's a message button right there, right? I'm going to tweet at him and say, knock, knock. <laughs> Just spam him. I like the spamming idea. All right, let's do this. All right, let's do this.
All right, there we go. Who's Mo Chan? Let me see. Mo. I think I've seen him on here. I'd, I've seen him in the chat a few times. Who else? Tabahi. Okay. Yeah, this is something that I didn't like, pulling her leg a lot. I don't know what the fuck the point was. Um, let him be, man. Like, she ha she's doing a tremendous... She's giving you guys free content, and the content isn't bad content. It's good things that you need to understand and learn as a bug hunter. So whether or not you you agree or like her, um, I don't understand some of these comments, man. I really don't. Uh, hey guys, I'm building my own minimal Ubuntu. Cool. Where can you find her content? Look her up. Uh, so if you don't have her on YouTube or you don't have him on Twitter, there's a link. You don't have her on, sorry, you don't have her on YouTube or on Twitter. There it is. Um, make sure you give her a follow. I thought she did a really good job with the interview. She seemed nervous in the beginning. Um, I don't consider myself a content creator anymore. Um, I don't put as much effort and time in my YouTube channel as I want to, but I think she's doing a very, very good job of, yeah, Live of her is saying the same thing because she's doing a better job than most content creators. Uh, and I agree. I think she's doing a fantastic job. I think her content is very, very good. Um, give her a little bit of credit. Be supportive of people that are doing free work. She's not, it's not like YouTube is paying her thousands of dollars. She's doing this for her free time. She is doing a lot of these um, pro bono. She's making pennies on the dollar um, to do this. Oh, so I said live overflow. I meant at overflow. My bad. Keep up the great work. Superhero, what's up, man? Thank you for the sub. I appreciate you so much. I think XSS rat would be a good one to have. Um... Let's do a quick raid. Let's see who's online. Let's do a raid. I got to get some work done. I got to do some grocery shopping and get my life together. I did not really do much this weekend other than hang out and chill. Thank you so much for that prime. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Stack smashing. Who is that? Are you trolling me? Or are you for real? Level down, co-founder of, wait, what do they do? Let me all DM you, um, live of our flow. Oh, it's a YouTube channel too, okay. Uh, John Hammond was here not too long ago, and so was, um, Trihack, or not Trihackman, the Cybermentor, why is it Trihackman? They've both been on here before. Um, I'll reach out to TCM and see if he'll be interested in coming back on here again. Uh, I'm looking at stack smashing. Let me ask. Um, let's message them. I don't mind that at all, actually. Let's do a wave. Okay. And I say force him to change his name. I don't know. He was known as Getcha Ninja before changed name to. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Got it. Okay, uh, XSS Rat would be a good one. Um, I would have to see if I can make that work. Um, okay, I think I have a good list of folks that want to come on the stream. All right, I am tapped out for the day i need to get some stuff done and i'm starving i haven't had anything to eat all day i don't know if you guys could hear my stomach growling during the interview but it's a little upset with me all right that's it i am done for the day i appreciate you all for being here tonight thank you so much for spending your late nights late evening morning whatever time zone you're in i appreciate regardless of time zone and everything you guys have done so far i appreciate you i will be back uh, 
online tomorrow around noon. So right now it's 1.20, an hour and some change um, earlier than right now. All right, be safe, wash your hands, wear a mask, and stay safe. If you don't follow me on social media, follow me on Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Give me a follow, keep in touch, come and hang out with me on Discord. I'll be around with all the Nahomies. I appreciate you all. I'll be back online tomorrow, but until then, I'm out. Peace.